Hello, Jennifer Harris with this episode of Fermented Science. Today's topic, what's the difference between sourdough and French bread? Before a baker begins making a batch of bread, she asks herself many questions. Should you use white flour, whole wheat flour, rye flour, or flours made from other grains? Will she add nuts, spices, or herbs? Will the bread be made into a baguette, a boule, or a sandwich loaf? In addition to these choices, another thing that a baker will consider is the leavening agent, also referred to as a raising agent, which is what causes the bread to rise. The leavener lightens the dough or batter by producing air pockets or bubbles throughout it. A chemical leaven is often found in quick breads, cakes, and even cookie recipes. Combining vinegar and baking soda will produce gas within the dough through a chemical reaction, causing foaming throughout the batter. Another popular leavening agent is baker's yeast, usually found in tiny paper envelopes in the baking aisle. Inside of these packets is a yeast that scientists call Saccharomyces cerevisiae. When you wake up this yeast by stirring it into warm water, it is hungry to eat sugars and starches. This is a fermentation process in which the yeast breaks down the carbohydrates in the flour. Carbon dioxide is produced in this fermentation, causing the bubbles to make the bread rise. Scientists believe that humans may have first discovered this yeast on the skins of grapes. A third leavening agent is a bread starter, which might also be called a sourdough mother or a wild culture. The oldest form of bread baking is that which uses a starter. Living bacteria and yeast from our natural environment are the key players in creating a starter. When first creating a sourdough starter, a baker will add some flour and water to a bowl and combine it into a pancake batter thickness. This batter will be left out without a lid for many days in a warm area as if to say, hello bacteria and yeast, I'm a buffet of carbohydrates waiting for you to come on in and have a snack. Although we can't see bacteria and yeast with our eyes, these microorganisms live on and around us everywhere. They are an essential part of our natural world. Once the baker notices that the bowl of batter has some bubbles on the surface, it is cause for celebration. This humble bowl of batter can be divided in half, using half of the starter to create the bubbles in a batch of bread. To the other half, the baker will add some more flour. Think of it as food for the bacteria and yeast, and save it for a batch of bread later in the week. Because both bacteria and yeast multiply quickly, it is important that the baker remembers to feed new flour to this starter every few days to keep it growing for many batches of bread. The bacteria in this starter will produce carbon dioxide to leaven, as well as acidic and sour flavors. This is where sour dough gets its name. There's a type of bread for every occasion, whether you'd like a soft slice of whole wheat bread for your sandwich, or a thick crusted cut to dip into your soup, the one thing that all bread has in common is that it has relied on bacteria and yeast to be delicious. I'm Jennifer Harris, and thanks for watching Fermented Science.